Welcome to the sixth and final episode of How Flutter Works. In this episode, we'll explore everything that sits below the Dart code in your Flutter app. To start, remember that while pure Dart programs can run directly on basically any client, Flutter mobile apps cannot exist without the protective shell of a native mobile app. This means that for Android and iOS, the true main method is not written in Dart. It's the same code deeply embedded in the operating system that launches every other app on your phone. Flutter apps on Android are a normal Android application, which runs a compiled blob of Dart code. That Dart code is asked to render frames and respond to user gestures, which make your app happen. The same is true for Flutter on iOS. They are normal Xcode projects, which run a compiled blob of Dart code to render frames and respond to user gestures. As a side note, things are slightly different on the web. There, the JavaScript or WebAssembly you compiled your Flutter app to just starts running. When you run Flutter Create, part of what you get are the typical native projects you'd have if you'd started in Xcode, Android Studio, or wherever. The only difference is there's some glue code to launch the Flutter engine, which in turn spins up a few new threads and starts executing your Dart code. And we can see this in action. Let's take a look at this for iOS, but note that everything is conceptually the same on other platforms as well. Within the generated iOS folder, you'll find nested folders named Runner and Flutter, along with the XC workspace icon you would double click to launch the whole thing in Xcode. You may also see an Xcode proj icon, but don't use that one. Within the Runner folder, which is the main iOS app, are all the typical files, like info.plist and appdelegate.swift. The appdelegate file is particularly interesting, as it contains an appdelegate that extends Flutter appdelegate. The role of the Flutter app delegate class is more or less to start a Flutter view controller, which you can see in the storyboard in Xcode. That Flutter view controller is responsible for launching the Flutter engine, and then you're really cooking. As a side note, it's worth pointing out that you can take basically this same glue code in a generated Flutter project and add it yourself to any existing native project. We call this process add to app when Flutter begins controlling a subset of an existing project. See flutter.dev for more add to app documentation. Anyway, back to the Flutter engine. Maybe you've heard about the fact that Flutter has this mysterious engine thing and that it's not written in Dart. What does the engine do and why is it written in a separate language? As for what it does, the engine is the first Flutter related domino in your Flutter app. The engine is Flutter's connection to the outside world for both stuff coming in and stuff going out. Examples of stuff coming into Flutter include device information, mouse and gesture events, memory handles for graphics, user preferences like localization, text scaling, or system settings like light mode versus dark mode, and also fundamental details like which graphics engine is even being used, Vulkan, Metal, OpenGL, or others. Examples of stuff going out include accessibility information, a new pixel buffer for each frame, and, well, that's actually about it. Mostly, the engine ferries information in to the framework. As for why it's written in a separate language, Flutter started as a fork of Chrome, so the Flutter team inherited a giant piece of C++ code which seeded the engine. Beyond that, for certain graphics operations, C++ is simply the best language to use. Of course, Flutter's engine has evolved since forking from Chrome, and nowadays has two primary layers. A platform agnostic layer, which is really what the Flutter engine typically refers to, and a platform specific layer, which is called an embedder. Collectively, the engine and embedder layers serve to glue the Flutter framework to the host platform and handle any inbound or outbound communication. Beyond merely being a door person and routing information in and out, the engine also does the hard work of rendering each frame. It uses Skia, or possibly Impeller, depending on your platform and when you're watching this video to translate the drawing commands your render objects made into the correct shader invocations for the active graphics framework. Earlier, I mentioned that the engine also starts a few threads, and it's helpful to understand how all of that works in Flutter. First, your app launches on a thread that's provided by the operating system. In Flutter parlance, we call this the platform thread. On iOS, for example, this is the main thread where most of the Swift code runs, including all the Flutter-specific code in the Flutter view controller. As we saw earlier, the main thing that code does is launch the Flutter engine. The Flutter engine then starts two more threads, 
one to execute all of your Dart code, which Flutter calls the UI thread, and one to convert each frame's painting commands into pixels, which Flutter calls the raster thread. This means all of the Dart code in your app, whether written by you, package authors, or Flutter framework contributors, sits in this blob, which the Flutter command line tool builds whenever you execute Flutter run or Flutter build. Calling native functions from Dart or Dart functions from native code is a common requirement, but as you can see, requires a thread hop. To make this easier, the Flutter engine has a mechanism called platform channels, which can route function calls in either direction. The engine uses its embedder for the current platform to offer the necessary machinery behind platform channels and route code wherever it needs to go. Combined with the Pigeon package, which helps generate necessary boilerplate in a type-safe way, Flutter developers are able to call any native code from Dart and any of their Dart code from native platform code. For example, from Swift on iOS or Kotlin on Android. It's important to note that this means all native APIs on any platform are available to Flutter developers. The vast majority of the standard stuff, from hardware features like the camera, microphone, or GPS, to software features like biometric lock or home screen widgets are supported by established plugins you can install with a single command. However, in the event of a brand new feature on iOS or Android not yet supported by a plugin, you're never further away from integrating the APIs you need than having Pigeon generate a few custom platform channels. So that's a tour of how Flutter works. From concepts about the language, Dart, to the implementation details of the framework's three main trees, the widget, element, and render object trees, all the way down to the engine and embedder layers which provide a foundation for everything else. As long as this was, it was still only a cursory explanation of how Flutter works. For just about every sentence in this whole series, someone has given an entire deep dive talk at one Flutter event or another, and those talks are great. But hopefully, this fills in the big picture and gives you confidence in where to look should you need to understand something more deeply. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And of course, for lots more information about Flutter, head to flutter.dev. 